Can you hear me now? Am I on? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, good morning. My name is uh, Jackson Sanderlin, and I am our children's and our youth director. Um, so this sermon should only be about three hours long. That's a joke. Will said, you got seven minutes. If it takes ten, you're fired. So um, join with me this morning as we go to the Word. And our scripture this morning is Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. This is Pentecost. It says, When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place, and suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled him. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. And when they, had, when they had heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians and Medes, and the Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Judea, Cappadocia, Punsund, Asia, Phygria, sorry, <laughs> and, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and all the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Verse 14, then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. I love this part. Fellow Jews and all you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. No, <laughs> no, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Someone say amen this morning. I am, um, I love this text. It was quite the text. Will, thank you for all of the difficult names I got to pronunciate in uh, my first sermon back in a while. Um, so uh, who, who out there has Netflix? Anyone got Netflix? Who's got Netflix? Don't, don't lie in church. Okay. Uh, 
for, for those of you who have Netflix, Netflix added this about a year ago. It's pretty um, fascinating. But as you're scrolling through Netflix, you get like a 15-minute preview uh, of what the show is all about um, before you click on it and decide, hey, this is what I'm going to watch. Um, and as I read over this text this week, um, I, I thought to myself, if Pentecost were a movie on Netflix, I would be clicking on that thing. I mean, we have tongues of fire, billows of smoke, all kinds of of things happening on. And perhaps you're um, maybe newer to church or um, maybe uh, you you just don't know this, but the book of Acts comes to us after the four eyewitness accounts of Jesus' disciples. And so the the New Testament starts with the birth of Jesus. You have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And all of those, it ends with Jesus is crucified. And then he resurrects. And so you kind of have this time of Jesus' life here on earth. And, and then it's the, you're in this transition phase. And the disciples consistently found themselves gathering in this place of the upper room. And, and I think something that we often do with the disciples, we kind of put them on this pedestal. Let me be clear. They're gathering in this room terrified for their own lives because of what they just watched for Jesus. And, and here you have these disciples, and, and Pentecost happens 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus. And the whole time he's spending time with the disciples, continuing to teach them. But even when he was alive, and what I think the lifeline of the Christian walk is, was Jesus was promising to them his Holy Spirit that he would send to them. He was promising his Holy Spirit that he would send to them. And so as they're gathering together in this place and they're wondering what's next to do, people often call Pentecost the the birth of the church. And I just wonder that in in the midst of you have these 12 disciples who just watched Jesus go through this. And and yet they, they, they gather in this place and they're in Jerusalem and people have come from afar to celebrate the festival of weeks. They're there to have a good time. Um, and, and, and the disciples stand up and they begin to proclaim these mysteries in the midst of all of these people. And they're, they're each hearing them in their own native tongue. It would be the equivalent if I just, if all of you spoke German and I broke out in fluent German. And, and they're hearing this in their native tongue and the Spirit of God comes upon them. And the church is born. And what, this is what it says later on in the, the chapter. It talks about Peter stood, stood up and he addresses the crowd and he preaches a sermon. It says that they were cut to the heart. And there were 3,000 people that joined the church that day. I got to, to think in, to myself, um, gosh, what would the early of church have been like? The more I read scripture, the more this point becomes evident to me that God's primary way of making known to all the earth his glory and his goodness towards all people, his primary way is through his followers. God did not consult with me on this when he decided that um, because uh, people are messy. People are messy. Like I got, I got two little ones at home. I mean, like they come out of, like we come out of mess. Um, we just are messy. And so I wonder if at the beginning of the church, when, when these disciples are, are trying to follow Jesus with the best that they can, I, I bet it was a bit messy. Like if I told you to go get 12 of your friends and start something new, I don't care if it was a school or a business or come up with a workout plan, in the beginning, it, it's going to be messy. Is this not where we find ursels today? Like it's It's messy. This walk with Jesus is a messy thing. The, the, us being a church is messy. But what I think the antidote is, like for us, is that like it's, it's not that we're a bunch of perfect people and that's what people are drawn to. No, it's that we're actually all imperfectly executing on trying to follow Jesus. <clears throat> Henry Nouwen says this about Pentecost. If you're wondering who Henry Nouwen is, he's a dead theologian. You can Google him. Um, He says, without Pentecost, the Christ event, I love this line, the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus remains imprisoned in history as something to remember. Think about and reflect on, but the spirit of Jesus comes to dwell within us so that we can become living Christ here and now. 
the, the point is this, is that Pentecost, the Spirit of God, moves out of the temple and makes its home in the heart of believers. The point of Pentecost today is that the Spirit of God is scanning to and fro over the whole earth looking to make its home in someone's heart. That's what we're celebrating at Confirmation today. The, the invitation by God to us today is this, come to me for all that you desire, that we would be a people. Like, look, I, I don't know how you feel. I can just speak from my personal experience. Like being a dad of two young kids, trying to be a children's director, a youth director, go to school, work a full time. Like, and, and listen, I say all of that and you may have heard none of it because you're thinking about all the things you've got going on in your life. Like we've all got something going on in our life and we're just doing the best we can to day by day come to the Lord Jesus and say, Lord, here, take this from me. Lord, I need you in this way. Help me be a good dad. Help me be a good husband. Help me be a good follower of you. And as we think about like how does multiplication happen in the church, the answer is in the text. The answer is in the text. That if we would be a people who believe that Jesus has sent his spirit to us to commune with day by day. Like, and, and we don't have to over-spiritualize this, right? Like, I'm just saying, like, can, can we take 10 minutes to open your Bible? It'll change your life. The spirit of God will come over that time. And we, we might be a people that as we live in this society that is so polarized, where the fringes team tend to be the voice for the majority, that we would be a people that says what's special about us is, is that we know Jesus. That we're, we're just a broken people. Come, get in here. There's room at the foot of the cross. May we be a church like that at Pentecost that invites the Spirit of God into our life day by day, hour by hour. Lord, we need you. And that we would in turn look to our community and say there's a place where water, where grace, where forgiveness, where love can be found. Yeah, we're different, and yes, we don't agree on everything, but gosh, we, we, we love Jesus, we, and we know we're loved by him. Amen.